I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just like, thank you. Just like that uh, moderator mentioned that she was sent to us, right? I can say to you today that I'm sent to you. I am sent to you today. That's why the Lord said there's somebody here. Yeah, you, you, you've been entering public transport. Get ready. Yes. Get ready. And then there's another person. The Lord is saying that you are accusing him. You said the Lord has forgotten you. Come. The Lord does not forget anybody. In fact, Isaiah 49 verse 16 says he has graven you upon the palms of his hand. That means he looks at you every time. When he stretches forth his hand, he's showing you to the entire world. Uh -uh. So how can he forget you? He can never forget you. Maybe you are passing through something now. It doesn't mean God has forgotten you. Because he's there with you. Whatever you are going through, he's there with you, going through it with you. Because he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So he's there with you. He never forgot you. He never did. It's you that probably forgot him or did not remember. You did not remember. When he delivered you from that past event, do you remember him? Do you remember to give him thanks? He delivered you. When you had bills to pay and they, and they were knocking on the door and the Lord came to your rescue. Do you remember that time? It's not the Lord that forgot. It's you that forgot. Why not go on your knees and ask the Lord to forgive you? Yes. Ask the Lord to forgive you, please. Ask him to forgive you. He didn't forget you. He didn't forget you. You forgot because you did not remember him. There's still somebody here. You, 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 are, you, are, you, are, you are supposed to you, Lord. You are supposed to say you are sorry. You, you, you never did. While that brother came up on the testimony, the Lord quickened me that there is somebody, there is somebody you need to say you are sorry. You, 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 you haven't said it. You haven't said you are struggling. You are struggling with that word. Where is that brother, please? Yes. Where is that person, please? Where is that person? You are here. Where is that person? Where is that person, please? You are supposed to say you are sorry. You are supposed to say you are sorry. You are supposed to apologize for something. And you are here. I'm very sure. Where, where are you? Please come. Come. If I move past this, that's, that's it. That's it. I don't know whether the Lord will have mercy anymore. I don't know. But there is mercy now for that person. There is mercy now for that person.
Remember, the Lord does not forget anyone. He doesn't. He doesn't. It's you that chose to, for, uh, to, to just accuse the Lord. And you, and, you, and, you, and you chose not to remember what the Lord has done. You chose not to remember. So please, he never. And I believe the Lord will move in your behalf. He will show himself faithful. Ah, he will. He will. He will show himself faithful in the name of Jesus. So you are supposed to say you are sorry. So whoever it is, I don't know whoever it is, but so if you can do it right now, it will be very good. Please go and do it and say you are sorry. You are sorry. You, have brought, uh, you, 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 you just need to apologize to whoever you have wronged. Hmm? Can you do that? If you can do it now, it will be, it will be the best. So just go and do it. Amen. Okay, let's get into the word. The title of today's message is It Took Our Infirmities. It Took Our Infirmities. How many of you agree with that? Do you agree that he, has, he took our infirmities? That's scripture. It says he took our infirmities. Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. Matthew 8, 16 and 17. So I read, When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who are sick. Look at that. He healed all who are sick. That evening, they brought so many people to him, including people that had, that were demon post oh God. Including people that were demon possessed, they brought them to Jesus. Sick people, demon possessed, they brought them. And he cast out the spirit with a word. Not two words, a word, one word only. And he healed all who are sick. Verse 17. Why did he do all this? He said that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Look at he did all that that might be fulfilled. What was spoken centuries before. What was spoken centuries before, he did all that to fulfill it. That what? He himself took our infirmities. Look at that. He didn't send anybody else to come and take the infirmity. He himself. It was him by himself. He came to take it. He didn't send a junior brother. He didn't send a, a disciple. He, sent, he, he came himself to take those infirmities. He himself took the infirmities. Because... If he had sent somebody else, look at, because he took the infirmities, then nobody can take it from his hand again. If he had sent somebody, maybe if somebody else had come to take those infirmities, then maybe you could have gone back to the person to say, give me my infirmity. But he himself took the infirmities. He took it from you and I, so that we will not come back to him to say, okay, give me my infirmity. Because when he takes something and it's in his hand, nobody can take it now. Nobody can take it. He took those infirmities from us. Therefore, we have no reason to bear any infirmities because he has taken it. You see, if I, if, if I come and I, and, I, and, I, and I took what belongs to you, will you still have the thing? You won't have it anymore because I would have taken it. Right? Will you have it? You won't have it. Then, where did we get what we are carrying? Let me demonstrate. This is your notebook, right? Okay, I'm taking it. I've taken it, right? Where's the notebook now? It's with me. Where's it, uh, uh, does she have the notebook anymore? She doesn't have it anymore, right? So, where will she get any other notebook to write with? Eh? Where will she get any other notebook? 
she can go and borrow somewhere, right? Or she can go and buy somewhere, but not from the Lord, because the Lord has taken it. It is now in the possession of the Lord, but she can now decide on her own ah, to go and get that thing. When the Lord did not send her, ah, oh God. Oh, oh God. He's taken. He took this thing from us. The notebook is taken from her. And then she, she just, she wanted to write, say, I need notebook now, I need notebook. But the notebook is with the Lord, completely with the Lord, not giving it back to her. And then she said, ah, I need notebook, I need notebook. She will now go and, and take somebody else's notebook. Buy what? Stealing one, stealing one, borrowing, uh-huh. taking forcefully, uh-huh. begging for it. Look at that. Begging for it. You understand? Yes, we beg for infirmities. We beg for what doesn't belong to us, what the Lord has taken from us. We beg for it. Because the Lord said, take no thought. Why? The thought is just lying down there on his own. You went there to take it. Who told you to take those thoughts? They don't belong to you. Why are you taking them? He has taken those infirmities from you. Why are you still wanting to own them? You still want to be the owner. Uh-uh. Did you hear what he said? He said he took our infirmities. Not his own infirmity, our, our own. Belongs to us. So each infirmity has a name that belongs to somebody. And then he came to say, give me that infirmity. This is, this is our notebook, right? My name is not on it. It's our name that's on it. Right? So it belongs to her. Just like infirmities can belong to somebody. And Jesus came to say, give me. Give me. It doesn't belong to you anymore. Who does it belong to now? Ah... Oh my goodness. The take, it now belongs to the taker. Look at me. I have taken it. Right? Without any apology, I have taken it. No apology. So why are you, why do you now want to become the owner again? You just like being the owner of something that you, you, you don't even need. He took our infirmities. He took it. It doesn't belong to you anymore. Don't get, don't, 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 don't even consider it. Leave those, th- look, infirmities can come in different ways. After Jesus has taken it, it can come different ways. Number one, sin. We look at some examples. Number one, sin. It could be sin, right? <laughs> After God has saved you, you now went to begin to sin again. One of them is lying. Disobedience is there. The Lord will give you instruction. You will not obey. You say, mm, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me. It's not me. You hide yourself. You, in fact, your conscience will be hitting you. You carry, you carry a, a baton and you hit it in the air. My friend, keep quiet there. Yes. Disobedience. Sin. You don't want to obey the voice of the Lord anymore. And those ones, they carry consequences. Which you don't know. They carry serious consequences. There was a story in the Bible where the man, John chapter 5, John chapter 5, where the man, the man was by the pool, pool Bethesda. So the pool Bethesda, it says he has five porches and it was covered. That means covered means it was covered against the elements, like the rain and all that stuff. So, right, so it was covered. So people would, be, people would prefer to stay under there than go outside into the open. So this pool, seasonally, an angel will come to, to stare the pool. So whoever moves to get there first, to get into the pool first, is delivered of every disease. Right? Delivered of every disease. Look at this mindset. John chapter 5, please. John chapter 5. So this man was there. He said this man had infirmity 38 years. He had been nursing that infirmity for 38 years. Maybe he had tried all his best to get rid of that, that particular infirmity. Now, a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. Look at that, 38 years. 38 years. Can you count 38? 38. Each year kept rolling by and the infirmity stayed. Maybe you are in that position too. You have been carrying some infirmity in you for, for so long that you are already tired of it and it has become part of you. 
is going away from you in the name of Jesus. This man counted 38 ah, with that infirmity. And he was by the pool, Bethesda. And every time the angel came to stare at the water, do you know one thing? He will be the first person to know. Ah, when I read it in scripture, I'm like, oh my God. This man was desperate for healing at all costs because he had been there 30, 80 years. He was desperate for healing. Go to verse 6. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already, he had already, he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? Verse 7. The sick man answered him, now, hear carefully. The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Uh, while he is coming, another steps down before him. Look at that. That means that he was slow. The infirmity had, had that, uh, had, had that, um, um, had that inf- uh, uh, effect effect on him in such a way that he became so slow perhaps he was crippled and he, 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 he would then have to crawl to get to where he's going and he became so slow. Guess what? What he said, while I am coming, another steps, meaning that he saw the staring first. He saw the angel stare the thing first and then he moved to begin to go. But because he was so slow people around would say hey, this man is moving again. They were using him as the clock. So no when the angel will stir the water. They were using him. So whenever they see him move, they will say, hey, he's moving. And they will jump ahead of him. Because they were faster. That's why he was disadvantaged. But yet, every time he will stay awake, waiting, his eyes open. He will say, hey, when is the angel coming again? He will be... I began to ask myself, why didn't the man just go and Kukuma sit beside the pool? Just Kukuma sit beside the pool so that he will just sit down there. As the angel is signing the thing, he will just roll inside. But then I remember I said, they were all under the, the five porches. It was covered. That means that the elements were very brutal in that area. They were very brutal. So if he had ended up by that pool, the elements would have finished it. So he had to stay under the porch. Look at that. That porch is a covering. He had to stay under there. You see? But everybody there who are using him to know when they're staring, they, they will sleep off. Once they wake up, they'll say, ah, this man is not here. They will now see him and say, oh, he's crawling to, to go into the pool. They will now quickly get and zoom past him. Look at that. Is that your case? What is infirmity really? Weakness. Infirmity is weakness. Or anything that causes weakness. Infirmity is weakness or anything that causes weakness. E- even in business. <laughs> even in business. Yes. A business may be weak. Not rising up. Not able to rise up. Ah, there is a business like that. There is somebody like that with a business. Not able to rise. Where are you? Yes. The Lord said there is a business like that. Not able to rise. A business that is not able to rise. Not able to rise. You have tried everything, but the business would not even rise. Where is that person? Where is that business? You know, you are the business. Ah, are you coming as usher or you are the business? Ah, ah. If you are coming here, you have to be you have to be quick. go to uh, Luke chapter 13 from verse 10. Luke 13 10. Did you hear what I said? I said there is somebody that there is several of you. Your business, look, this is what I said. Let, let me read it for you. Now follow me carefully. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Look at that. There were several synagogues, but Jesus chose one synagogue to go to. He has chosen to be here today. Amen. And, and behold, go on. 
And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity. Look at 18 years and was bent over. Infirmity can also deform somebody. Infirmity can deform somebody because the spirit, there's a spirit of infirmity can deform. This woman was deformed. She was bent over. She could not look at. He says she was bent and could in no way raise, raise herself up. That's where the business came from. That businesses can, they are business that, that cannot even raise up themselves. They cannot raise up themselves at all. It's because of infirmity. How about some people? Maybe there's, a, there's your body parts that cannot raise up itself anymore. It's just there, flabby. Not able to raise up itself. Then, when, but when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. Verse 13. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. If you have any infirmity in the house, please come. Come out now. I know what the Lord has told me to do. Any infirmity in the house, come now. Come now. This, 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 this call will not be repeated again. Please come now. Can, can I get a bowl? Can I get a song there? Just a light song. He took your infirmities. He took our infirmities. Therefore, you have no business having that infirmity anymore because he has taken it. He has taken it. But then, so far you have stepped there. I believe you have stepped out in faith. You have stepped out believing the Lord with an expectation that yes, the Lord is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Ah, I still have more to share, but then <laughs> I'm, I'm being commanded. You sent your word. Take the pain away. I know you take the pain away. You take the pain away. I know you take. Thank you. 
Oh 
To my deep oh, Amen. Amen. Look, he has taken it. He took it. He took it from you. Therefore, you have no business with it anymore. Look, the devil may come to suggest for it to you. It's not that he will keep quiet. To, ah, oh God. The Lord showed me a dream one day. He showed me a dream one day. It was a dream. It was, it was a life dream. It was like, a, like, like, like as if I was in it. And actually, oh God, okay, he doesn't want me to go into those details. Guess what? I was praying. I, in that dream, I was praying. I was praying. And I saw a shadow move by the wall. It was, it was just, it was just staying by the wall. And it began to move along the wall. Along the wall, it began to move along, towards the door. And then he quietly stepped opened the door and stepped out quietly and closed the door while I was praying. And as I continued to pray, I went to the door and I opened the door and I saw the person standing behind the door, not gone. Not gone. Immediately, immediately I opened the door and he saw my face. He just said, yeah, he has come. Oh, and he ran away. Look. This has been cast away. Oh. Oh. You have no business with it anymore because the devil may come back to suggest to you. He may come back to suggest to you say, eh, are you sure? Ah, he told Eve the same thing. He said, are you sure? He told Eve the same thing. He said, are you sure? Did God really say? That's, that's the meaning. He said, are you sure? Are you sure God said this? You have no business with that thought anymore. Don't take that thought. Don't agree with it. Let it go forever because he has taken it. You have no business borrowing it from the devil. Don't borrow it from the devil. God bless you.